Hello, my name is Leonardo. I'm from Universidade de São Paulo, Brazil, and I would like to thank all of you for the interest in my talk. So I'm going to show some results from my master thesis entitled Water and Heat Conservation Hypotheses Do Not Explain the Geographical Body Size Variation in Atlantic Coastal Frogs. Animal body size variation is target of several studies in macroecology. Bergman firstly proposed that endotherms have larger body size in higher latitudes or colder locations. Later, this pattern was new as Bergman's rule, and it happens because a larger body could promote a heat conservation more efficiently, a mechanism known as heat conservation hypothesis. However, ectotherms like anurans have a great diversity of strategies to control body temperature, and it is expected that other conditions could influence body size variation. As we know, anurans have a strict relationship with water, and it is proposed that frogs inhabit in dry locations could reach larger body sizes to promote better water conservation. This mechanism is known as water conservation hypothesis. So, the objective of our study was to test if the body size variation of frogs from Brazilian Atlantic Forest follows heat conservation or water conservation hypothesis. We selected six species from Brazilian Atlantic Forest from different phylogenetic groups and with different ecological traits. We determined body size with two variables, the snout vent length, SVL, a linear measure, and the three-dimensional variable called stoutness. Then we got temperature and potential evapotranspiration values from Atlantic Forest and we made multiple regressions between the morphological dimensions and climatic variables. So we did not find a general rule for frogs from Atlantic Forest because the results show that associations with temperature and PET are different among species. We can see in these two species, Hinella crucifer group and Itaputila langsdorf, a positive relationship between SVL and temperature. In other words, Individuals from these species were larger in warmer locations, reversing the heat conservation hypothesis. On the other hand, we found that the species Adatus binotatus had a negative relationship between SVL and temperature, following the heat conservation hypothesis. And about the other species, we found that Toropa miliaris and Toropa taophora had a negative association with PET, a result inverse as proposed by the water conservation hypothesis, with smaller individuals located in drier environments. But again, we found the species following one of the hypotheses that we tested. Cyclohanthus elotrodactylus had larger body size in drier locations, following the water conservation hypothesis. The other morphological dimension, stoutness, had a poorly relationship with climate. We found a positive relationship between stoutness and PET only in Hinella crucifer group, corroborating the water conservation hypothesis. So our findings were that heat conservation and water conservation hypothesis do not offer a general explanation for body size variation in frogs from Atlantic Forest, because we found diverse relationships between two body size dimensions and climate. Moreover, it is not usual studies conducting analysis with more than one body dimension. For anurans, SVL is the most common variable to consider as body size, and we hope that our study encouraged the use of more than one morphological variable in macroecological studies. And finally, as we know, frogs are adapted to live in many habitats. In our study, we have arboreal, terrestrial, and saxiclus species, as we can see the figure with direct and indirect development. So we conclude that the high diversity in these traits may interfere in body size development and should be considered in new studies. And that's it. I would like to thank all these people and organizations and thank you for watching. I'll be available to answer questions and if you would like to know more or to talk to me about this presentation, I will let my email available for you. Thank you.